So 12.31, let's revisit the previous problem. So if you haven't looked at it, go ahead and look at the previous video. And we're going to change it's everything exactly the same, except that we're going to have the mass of C being 20 kilograms as opposed to 10. Okay, so everything's going to remain the same except for the mass of C. So this equation 1 still remains the same. My positioning of my vectors, Y, B, X, A, X, C, all the same. Then we're going to do the free body diagrams are all going to be the same. Um, these equations all the same, all the same. Okay, so what are we going to do? When we get here, what's going to change? Well, over here, instead of having this as 5, this was 5 before, now this is going to be 20, right? So, sorry, this was 10 before, now it's going to be 20. This was 5, so this is 20 now. Okay, so we have 25 um, times the gravity times the coefficient. So instead of 35, let's actually do this so we can highlight that we're changing this. Instead of 35, this will be 58. 58.86 newtons, okay? But this is still smaller, right? The 58 is still smaller than the 98 of B. So this still holds true, the system will move, we still need to use our kinematic coefficient as opposed to the static one, all good, all good. All right, let's move on. What else? So when we come to the solving here, okay, when we do this algebra here, when we plug in the, the values, I'm going to jump into the part in which this will change, we'll see how that's going to change our conclusion, okay? Right here, so this is the first time we actually plug in mass of C. And then if we compute this, then this goes away. Let me go ahead and delete this. Okay, so this goes away, and instead what we get is 36.4. Okay, so 30, I'm gonna write this probably in blue. 36.4 newtons, okay, so it changed. Okay, so if, if we keep, keep going, let's keep solving the, the changes. Over here, uh, this is the next part, and this we're just gonna change, because it's no longer 33.63, so this will change, this will go away. We get rid of this, and our new value will be 2.53, still positive, so it's still going downwards. And then next one, let's get rid of this one. The acceleration of A, what's the new value here? Negative 5.318, okay, so still moving to the right. And then finally, we get here to this guy, and guess what happens? Okay, let's get rid of this. We calculate, compute a new T, new A, and here we get positive 0.2. Five, eight. Okay, which would imply that this is going to the right. Now, if we look at the setup, okay, if we look at the setup, okay, this would be implying that our B is going downwards, our A is going rightwards, and our C is going rightwards. Okay, and you can see, hopefully, this is intuitive. This cannot happen, right? There's no, there are no forces uh, making C go rightwards. We know the only force pointing rightwards on C is the friction force, which is a force that uh, opposes the movement, right? It doesn't create movement; it opposes the movement. So that is impossible. So our conclusion there is that this is impossible. Okay, so we go back to the whole thing we're doing here. We go, okay, because this is impossible, that this probably means that we our assumption was wrong. I mean, this means that our assumption was wrong, right? Um, therefore, the acceleration of C is zero. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that when we first assume that this is the whole thing going to move, we were incorrect. What actually going to move is A and B. C is just going to stay still. Okay, so this will be the answer for C. But if this is the case, then we have to go again and reevaluate our, our equations and re and solve them again in light of this new information. Because our acceleration of A and B will change, so will the tension. Okay, so we need to re uh, evaluate and recalculate things in light of this new information. So let's go ahead and grab our uh, old equations. Let's rewrite them in terms of this new information that we just acquired. So this is one of them. This is our equation one. We'll go ahead and copy down here so we can restart fresh. Okay, so that's equation one. What else do we have? Um, we also have equation two. Probably do this. We have equation two. Equation three. Equation four. Okay, now we can reevaluate. All right. So we know that AC is zero. So therefore. Because that it holds true, then that means that acceleration of A equals minus two times acceleration of B. Okay. What else? If this is true over here, then that means that this just we can just consider that equation. This is not going to be useful for us anymore. Right now we have the three unknowns and three equations. Unknowns being acceleration of A and B and the tension. Right. So let's go ahead and write this now. Um, over here I'll do friction of A minus tension equals the mass of A minus 2ab, right, so I'm slipping in here, okay, and on the other side there, we're going to have the weight of b, two tensions, so the acceleration of b 
is just the weight of B minus two tensions divided by the mass of B. And we can set that in as well. So if we do that, we get the fraction, the friction on A minus the tension equals the mass of A times minus two that multiplies the weight of B minus two T divided by the mass of B. Okay, no, the only unknown here of this equation is the tension, so we can solve for tension now. When I have friction, I'll substitute that by the weight of A times the coefficient 0 0.2 minus T mass of A minus 2. Where I have weight of B, I'll go ahead and do gravity times the mass of B 2T, and that's all divided by the mass of B. So we can get rid of this mass of B over here, and only have the 2T divided by the mass of B. So let's go ahead and substitute. We have gravity times mass of A. Mass of A is 5, so 5 times gravity times 0 0.2 minus t equals 5 times uh, minus 2, so we can go ahead and do minus 10 here. That multiplies the gravity minus uh, 2 divided by mass of b, which is 10, so 0 0.2, 0 0.2 tensions. What else there? Um, 5 times 0.2, that's just 1, so this is gravity minus t equals minus 10 g positive 2t, therefore 3t equals 11g, and therefore t equals 11 thirds of gravity, which is about 35.97, 35.97 newtons. This is our new value for tension after all these changes, okay? And with that, then we can calculate the acceleration of A, acceleration of B, or are the equations that we're going to use for that. For B, we're going to use this one here. For an acceleration of B, all we do is mass, what are the masses? 10. So 10 times gravity minus 2 times. Divided by 10, 2 times 35.97, which equals 2.62. Positive, which means this is going on to the downward direction. And that is one of our answers. And to find the last one, we just grab, what is it? This guy here. Okay, which is going to tell us that this is just 2 times up 2, minus 2 times 2.62. That will be just negative 5.23, approximately, obviously. Okay, if it's negative, then that means this is going backwards like we would expect it to go. So that's brilliant. Okay, so this is our updated answer. If the mass of C is now uh, 20 as opposed to its original value of 10. So what are the answers? Well, the tension is now 35.97, so approximately 36. The acceleration of A is 5.23 meters per second rightwards. Acceleration of B is 2.62 meters per second squared downwards. And the acceleration of C is 0, nil. Let me know if you have any questions.